And he went. On Manx Radio. The Man in Line. Daily interaction, debate and exchange of ideas. Broadcast on Manx Radio from midday till one, Monday to Friday. Mr. Mai, good afternoon. Welcome to Man in Line on Max Radio. We're open line through till one today, so the floor is yours. Text 166177, email studio at maxradio.com, WhatsApp 166177, or call 661368. First things first, though, let's say uh, I would hope that everybody who got results today, I hope they went the way uh, you wanted them to go, or if they didn't, that there is a plan for the future, i.e. GCSE, GCSE, and other level one or two qualifications uh, came out today. So I hope everything went well. We'll have some reports on that later on on uh, Manx Radio News. We've been speaking to some uh, students. Uh, A note in uh, from... Uh, to WhatsApp that came into me just say regarding GP appointments I've been trying for weeks to get an appointment with a GP but I'm told every time there's nothing available and my symptoms worsen uh, first thing in the morning uh, to, for an urgent appointment call for an urgent appointment my issue isn't urgent though so I've held off for weeks trying to get an appointment but no luck i've ended up with an urgent appointment today despite not needing an urgent appointment i just want to be able to see my gp which i imagine is where most of the appointments will end up going is this just every surgery Uh, this particular listener was in peel and surely if they want to increase the population they could do with sorting out the broken system first I just wonder whether that's something you've come across trying to get a doctor's appointment and being told, you know, call back tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock or 8.30 and get an appointment for the day. If this is happening in Peel, where else is it happening? If uh, and where, How long do people book at? Is it a couple of months, I think, for GP appointments? Anyway, just one of the many things uh, in regarding uh, health care that um, I've had recently. Uh, and uh, a note in just said a number of tenants in Annika and Paul Road on the Paul Rose Community Group have spoken out saying that drug dealers have been stealing from residents and making residents' lives hell by feeding teenagers drug habits. Uh, We've had stabbings, knife crime, stealing cars, stealing money, an increase in thefts and break-ins. Residents have been calling for police to take action over the past three years. There's been a number of armed police incidents which uh, which are concerning residents. And, of course, there was one recently. Um, So what is going to happen? Um, And uh, these places are becoming more dangerous for families to live and grow up. Uh, So uh, what's going to... A lot of stuff is happening on Facebook, uh, on the... (coughs) Uh, excuse me, the Paul Rose Community uh, Group on Facebook. Um, well, I know for a fact, having spoken to the uh, Chief Constable earlier on this year, and he's just said that the police are taking um, uh, a completely... Um, there's no, no tolerance in this at all. There is absolutely no tolerance for this. And the Chief Constable was talking about the need to get to the bottom of this and to make sure that uh, drugs gangs are wiped out from the Isle of Man. Obviously, our big issue is it's a, it's nothing that's not in the public domain, but drugs are worth far more on the Isle of Man than they are in Liverpool. So we are targeted with northwestern drugs gangs trying to get their stuff on the Isle of Man to sell it for sometimes double, triple the price. And that's the conundrum we have here in that there are people on the Isle of Man who are trying to get people into drugs habits. Uh, there was um, a magistrate recently, earlier on this year, talked about the fact that they target vulnerable young people. Well, the police are getting to the bottom of this, and uh, obviously you hear many things on Manx Radio about drugs busts and police raids and what have you. So we'll watch it, but of course, the first port of call is always 631212. The first port of call is always to report it to the police. But anyway, uh, thanks for that point. 
about what is going on in Annika and Paul Rose. Uh, so we watch and we wait. You heard that story in the news at uh, 12 o'clock. A weird story. Well, is it a weird story? Crongbourne Cricket Club has hit out on social media allegations and opportunistic, uh, opportunistic photos which appear to show a dead wild rabbit in a trap in its grounds. Well, Crongbourne Cricket Club has released a statement just saying they, they've got a licensed pest control officer who's been employed due to concerns over holes dug by rabbits which pose a risk to human health. Uh, Crongbourne Cricket Club expressed its disappointment that baseless accusations have appeared to circulate online, stress at no point the rabbits have not been left to starve. The club has threatened legal action against any uh, organisation that repeats the accusations. You can find the full statement at manxradio.com. So that's the statement from Cronkbourne Cricket Club. The st- story is they have a licensed pest control officer that's been employed. And that's what that situation is. Regarding yesterday and the drop curbs, um, if the person calling for drop curbs works in government, surely he's ideally placed to directly approach staff working in the office for equality, says John. Uh, and also outstanding penalty tickets. <laughs> we talked about this a lot yesterday, didn't we? Uh, how much is now owed locally on unpaid parking and fines? Apparently, says Andy, as at November last year, it was £810,000. How much now, more or less, is it? So how much is owed in unpaid parking and fines? Um, I think they eventually go through to the coroner to collect, don't they? Uh, thanks to uh, hi Lucy in Ramsey. Energy for the future is not straightforward. Interesting listening today. Uh, Julian gave us a lot of food for thought regarding that. In the event that we won't be having an offshore wind farm, uh, will we, because now they're too expensive and aren't commercially viable, the costs having risen by 40%, says Andy. So everything is... Well, I think the one thing that's absolutely certain is now the energy in the future is going to cost us more. Surely some politician somewhere, and I think it was Laurie Hooper, wasn't it, a a, a wee while ago, said that um, the way to get people to be green is to lower the cost of electricity. If all you're going to do to tell people to, um, you know, to go to the green future, the net zero future is, it's going to cost you more money. It's it's never really going to work, is it? (laughs) Oh, dear me. Uh, and uh, the climate issue change with wildfires is not that the starting of fire, but it means the fire is far worse when humans start it. Somebody called up yesterday and said, you know, wildfires, uh, the, the, the amount of wildfires aren't down to, isn't down to climate change. Uh, but the point this uh, texter makes on 738 is the fact that uh, the ground is a lot drier subsequent to that. And... Uh, more messages regarding oh the marina hotel yes this was a question yesterday about what the situation with the marina hotel the marina hotel on douglas promenade is ready to go to planning apparently all the drawings are done and will be submitted very soon this is text to 152 d if all goes well with the planning they'll be looking to start works on the marina hotel in douglas on spring 2024 which is good news uh, it will look better than it does at the moment so we wish you well with your uh, planning application on 152 i hope that goes um i think we're better off keeping the ben as uh, the manxman firstly um won't steer in high winds and takes nearly twice the fuel for each trip is anybody going to be available to afford the tickets you may have seen yesterday gary and ramsey uh, that uh, our friends at the steam packing company put out some myth busters they call them Telling everybody what the myths are with the Manxman and what the uh, what the truth is uh, with the Manxman. Uh, you can read that at manxradio.com. Of course, the Steam Pack has also got the situation now where the Maritime Union is balloting members over potential industrial action. Steam Packet employees, maybe the next workers to go on strike on the Isle of Man as talks around rotors seem to be reaching crisis point. The Maritime Trade Union Nautilus has confirmed it will 
mill ballot members. This has been triggered after Nautilus claims the steam packet refused to engage in independent arbitration, despite repeated requests following conflicts, they say, which began by the company trying to enforce changes to terms and conditions of employment, namely rotors. Uh, oh, Julian's on now. Hi, Julian. Hi, Andy. Uh, yeah, um, I was just making a coffee and my ears started burning. Uh, no pun intended, by the way, uh, to do with um, fires and global warming. Yeah. Um, based on the comment, I think it was Mark yesterday who made, made a comment. Um, my comment on that, if you take the Lahaina fire in Maui recently, last winter was unusually wet and cool across the Hawaiian Islands. It's widely reported on their Met Office. And it was also noted that those non-indigenous African grasses had grown taller and thicker than usual, which would suggest a higher fuel loading for the combustible material that was available to make the fires worse. So you could say a colder, wetter winter can make summer fires worse. But what could also make Lahaina's fire worse? Now, this is something that maybe people want to have a little look at. It was reported in the Washington Post very recently in an article titled A Terrifying Fire Struck Maui in 2018. Officials were warned of a repeat. And this tells about August 24th, 2018, 11 o'clock at night, something ignited the grassy hills uphill from Lahaina and winds created what locals called a wall of fire. Now, luckily, the winds weren't strong enough to spread the fire on this occasion, but it took out 21 houses, 27 cars, and 2,000 acres were burned. Now, what happened was a heated town hall meeting was held a few days later on the 29th in 2018, and residents were angrily asking, and you can see the Facebook video of this, why were the overhead power lines not shut down? Why were emergency sirens not sounded? Why didn't the firefighters um, continue to have water? Why wasn't there an evacuation plan? Why no cell phone alerts? And there was no assistance from government. And now in 2023, the residents are challenging the local government officials, I think it was two days ago, who were saying nobody saw this coming. So all the problems above have been repeated in re since 2018. Uh, there were also calls from residents which have been registered to remove dangerous dry grasses and eucalyptus trees to create fire breaks which went unheeded. Even to this day, the residents formed the West Maui Taxpayers Association for a Disaster Plan. That plan was still sat on the shelf in the government office when the fire broke out recently. Um, and this is not the first time that Lahaina has been severely damaged. A huge storm in 1858, another El Nino year like this year, caused massive destruction. And the old courthouse, which is a favorite for tourists, was constructed later in 1858 from the timbers of the leveled buildings. Um, but if you compare Lahaina, um, that was 17,000 acres were burned. But if you look at the Peshtigo fire of October 8, 1871 in Wisconsin, that burned 1.2 million acres or 70 times the area. And it killed over 1,100. And then you had the Great Chicago Fire hundreds of miles away the same day in 1871 that destroyed 17,000 buildings, 100,000 homeless, 300 dead. The Great Michigan Fire, the same day, 1.2 million acres burned. So uh, what, do you, what, that, what are you know, saying? I mean, what's, your, what's implicit in what you're saying behind all this? Well, the reports recently are saying that um, the Lahaina Fire is the worst in 100 years. So if we've been having global warming recently, and these fires are 70 times the size back in the 1800s, and there were terrible ones in the 1920s, um, you have to ask the question, if the, if the premise is the fires are worse, where is the evidence of that? I mean, even this Tenerife one recently, um, this was deliberately started in the Arafo Mountains, north of Las Americas. But that area that it started in is at 6,000 feet altitude. I've been up there many times. And that temperature range during that fire was 24 degrees Celsius in the day and a cool 13 at night. Um, and the Canarian president, Fernando Clavico, is saying, would there have been a problem if there hadn't been arson? And I just want to remind people that it's 20 years in October the 14th of the Brada fire. If you remember that, Andy. Yeah, I do. 
Yeah. Now, that resulted in a report from University of Edinburgh to the Isle of Man government's Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestries at the time. And the report recommended widening the footpaths and mulching the path itself. And I've been up that footpath very recently, and you can go up early, get your feet through at the minute. Regular reviews of fire brigade skills, training and equipment to control fires on the open hill and thinning out of um, Bracken and Heathland with fire breaks. Now, you know what I'm saying. Is that done? I've just walked up that hill last week and you could hardly kick your feet through it. So if there's a recommendation in 20. Um, in 2003, recommending that those footpaths are recommended to be cut right back and mulched to make sure that fires can't skip across them. You're kind of seeing a similar pattern to Lahaina's fire from 2018. And if the Washington Post is reporting that, I'll believe it. All right. Okay, Julian, appreciate that. Thanks for calling us today. Thanks, Andy. Cheers. All right. Well, yeah, I don't know whether you're a mayor. And uh, crikey, that was, this is 20 years ago. But the uh, it was the University of Edinburgh that brought out a report, uh, the Bratterhead Fire, 17th to the 19th of October in 2003. And, uh, well, I just wonder what your thoughts are regarding that. We get reports on television all the time and on social media about wildfires that are happening all around the world. Are there more fires than there used to be? And if they are caused by arson and if if people aren't following the uh, recommendations, then what are these fires? Uh, Juan's with us now. Hi, Juan. Did the MV Snowflake sail this morning, Andy? I think she did. Oh, it wasn't too hot for her. That's brilliant. That's, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. No, she glad looks fine. That. I'm just trying to figure out what anybody needs a wardrobe for on, on uh, the Manx one, by the way. A double, a double cabin I can get, but a wardrobe. Maybe to jump off. Let's not go down that road. There, there was a good concert the other night, the Human League concert at the Villa Marina. Did you hear any reports on that? No, I didn't. Did you go? It was. It was excellent. Very, very good. Nice to see um, the concerts in, in the hall. Nice to see the hall getting used. And the gaiety, it's, um, they're getting a, a quite a few shows. And I believe there's a good one on Saturday night as well, um, the, the Rumours Fleetwood Mac, which is um, a, a, they're excellent band. I've seen them in um, Orlando last year. Um, absolutely excellent. And, you know, if anyone wants to see a good show and support local Brank, uh, Manx Breast Cancer, that's the time to do it because all the money is going to the Manx Breast Cancer. And, and I think um, Julie and Anne and all the crew there, they do a fantastic job at raising money for all the equipment at the hospital. If it wasn't for these guys, um, I can't know where we'd be with some of the equipment. Um, they, they really put a lot of effort into making money to stay on the Isle of Man and, and, and get use for the local people. But that um, wasn't why you called. It was not why I called. No, indeed. Um, an old story that's just appeared again. And, of course, with, um, with all the mutterings of lockdowns approaching and um, universities in America asking for their, their new semester to be masked up and mandatory vaccinations, I'm just looking at the report from the FDA. They've quietly accepted... That old um, chestnut that we've talked about for a long time, ivermectin. You heard about that one, Andy? Well, I have, but uh, there's all sorts of rowing back on this. Uh, The the FDA, uh, they say, haven't endorsed it. I know somebody uh, somebody did, uh, was it Erin Elizabeth, who who was blogging on this? It was all over Twitter. I'm reading... Yeah, I'm needing a report. There's quite a few reports out about it, actually. But, I mean, let, let's stop it. I mean, everyone, like, criticised, well, I think myself and Julian, for, oh, they see a horse drug. Well, let's not forget that in 1986, the FDA, actually, it was it was a drug that was repurposed for animals, and it was originally purposed for humans. So let's get that one right. <laughs> but I'm reading a report here on the Western Journal after years of um, denigrating ivermectin as dangerous and horse medicine. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has been forced to retreat on its all-out attack on the medicine after three doctors sued the agency in federal court. Um, the FDA made a key admission in court during Tuesday's proceedings, which lawyers for doctors asked for the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals um, whether doctors have the right to prescribe ivermectin. So after all that battle that we had and all the people who called us um, conspiracy theorists and nutters, there we have it. <laughs> and and in in the wake of um, in the wake of more lockdowns with Tony Blair trying to um, encourage um, digital health passports 
Um, looks like we might be in for another interesting little run if people want to give their freedoms away again. Well, it will be interesting. As I say, I mean, the FDA have said they didn't endorse it. I mean, that's what the US Food and Drug Administration say. They didn't endorse the use of ivermectin to treat or prevent COVID-19. There are all sorts of claims on social media that they did. But I mean, they've said very recently that they didn't. And it's very strange when you look at the reports of the countries that actually did use it, um, how little their statistics were in, in um, people with, with um, serious symptoms of COVID. And again, when I was in Mexico um, the other year, um, ivermectin was a, uh, a thing. You just went there, you got ivermectin, and they said, oh, is it for COVID? Yes. And, and that was it. it. It was given. So, you know, there's countries that just accepted it and used it, and their, their figures were very, very low. So it's, um, you know, it's a probably another conversation topic. I'm sure we'll get someone coming on saying I'm crazy again, but um, there you go. Um, I just thought with the um, with all the news that's bandying around the um, social media sites at the moment about um, uh, people um, uh, getting masked up and, and um, uh, parts of America have taken this into consideration for a rough ride. Um, we'll see how the fear factor ramps up on this one. Just that time of year, isn't it, Joe and A? Just that time of year. Just that time of year, and the uh, yeah. I believe the hospitals are pretty full at the moment. Over That's here. what they're and, saying. Um, apparently, yes. Apparently, the hospital is pretty full. Uh, Ramsey is doing uh, X-rays. I think the Cottage Hospital is doing X-rays at the moment. There. All right, yeah, Joe. Yeah. Good to hear Cheers, from Andy. you. Take All right, care. thanks for that. Twenty-eight minutes past twelve. Manx Radio on Man in Line. Yes, the UK Health Security Agency has published an initial risk assessment of the SARS uh, COV two variant BA two eight six. The variant was detected on the 18th of August in the UK and has also been identified in Israel, Denmark and the US. Well, 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 well. What is uh, happening? This uh, new ver- this new EG variant, the latest coronavirus, EG5 Eris. No, please. <laughs> I don't think I could take it. I don't think we could have another one. Um, I've got to say, by the way, congratulations to... Let's get on to something pleasant, and that is well done to uh, the boys, uh, the Ravens, FC Alaban. Beat Litherland last night. A stoppage time goal gave the Rev- Ravens a third straight win. When, well done to Dean Lease. A strike deep into the second half stoppage time. So FC Alaban win 2-1 in Litherland Remka uh, yet in the NWCFL last night. They've got lots and lots and lots of uh, games coming up so we wish them well and they've got a big squad so hopefully they'll deal with all that uh, a message this was in from uh, Hillary hi Hillary and she just said we've heard nothing on the Isle of M- on uh, Manx Radio about the uh, 60th anniversary of what happened in Ramsey well 60 years ago next year of course 64 to 2024 Radio Caroline appeared that's the 60th anniversary but Hillary said we've heard nothing about 60 years ago when Ramsey was completely revolutionised it was the South Ramsey development plan it's true I think it was two million pounds the government spent uh, on the scheme and it was uh, of course when everything moved from South Ramsey when everybody was moved from South Ramsey and uh, the new hotel was built and all the shopping area and the flats is that really 60 years ago 1963 the South Ramsey plan uh, Man in Line is on live through till one today. We're open line if you've got something to say. There's a new way to Subway with two fantastic menus. Which will you go for? The all new Subway series with 15 irresistible creations like the Big Bombay Sub, Great Goddess Salad, Emperor Wrap, and Big Cheese Steak Sub Melt. Or create your own. You pick the ingredients you want and build your own sub, salad, or wrap the way you want it. There's a great mix of healthy and indulgent menu items available from Subway and ShopRite, Peel and Port Erin. Ramsey Garden Centre is open every day over the bank holidays. And with being three times larger than last year, it is well worth a visit. New choices for indoor and out. Visit Ramsey Garden Centre on Albert Road or check out our Facebook. Discover Bathline, the new name in bathrooms at Haldane Fisher. 
Visit their brand new bathroom and tile showroom in Douglas for a stunning range of bathroom styles and designs. Or get inspired online at bathline-bathrooms.im. Whether traditional or contemporary, Bathline's dedicated in-house bathroom designers will bring your dream bathroom to life. Bathline at Haldane Fisher. Designed for living. Parados Theatre Company, in association with Villa Gaiety, presents an open-air theatre experience. With a unique staging of the Merchant of Venice, 7th to the 9th of September, in the Villa Marina Gardens. Bring rugs, blankets or chairs and enjoy a summer evening like no other. Featuring one of Shakespeare's best-loved plays. Discover the magic of open-air theatre with the Merchant of Venice, 7th to the 9th of September. Book your tickets now at villagaiety.com or on 600 treble 5. Sponsored by Ravenscroft and supported by your nation station, Manx Radio. Have you ever wondered what makes people want to do this? Go! Join me, Beth Espy, for the Journey to a Dream podcast, where I talk to riders about why they want to race here on the Isle of Man. You can't even explain it in words, like, a bit like Grand Theft Auto, the video game. Feeling of petrol and stuff running through your veins, it just, ah, oh, yeah, it just feels amazing. If you're outside the sport, it looks absolutely mad. I think there's other two types of people, really, people who want to do it and people who don't. Journey to a Dream, available to download at motorsport.manxradio.com or your favourite podcast provider. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. 27 minutes before one. Peter's on now. Hi, Peter. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'd just uh, like to uh, invite all your list, uh, listeners to uh, watch a do- documentary called uh, Human Planet Earth. Um, I think it was pro- first produced in 2018. Uh, it's basically about a, a long-time activist who decides that um, he'll look further into the green agenda. Um, and chases where all the money goes and how the big businesses are promoting all this. And it's amazing what he discovers. OK. Uh, well, in, in, uh, in, in, uh, give us a pen portrait then. What does he find out? Well, I mean, basically, there's, there's big money throughout the world, billionaires and Branston and all them sort of people. Uh, they're into bio plants and the, the rape and all the, the, the wood and... Uh, the things like they're building, the same about uh, solar panels and all the rest of it, and how they're having to plug into the mains anyway, and, and burn gas and fossil fuels to keep them running. Um, it is a very good documentary, whether you believe in the climate change or you don't. People really need to watch it. Okay, Peter, what's it called again? Uh, Human Planet Earth. If you go on Google and just type that in. Uh, and asked to watch the full documentary. Okay, all right, that's good. Thanks, Peter. We appreciate that. Human Planet Earth. If you want to uh, take a look at that, uh, on a go. Oh, hi to John. Uh, called to ask if anybody had heard of another problem he read about caused by a mix of pollen, dust, and exhaust fumes. Apparently, he read it was twice as bad as COVID. Couldn't remember exactly, but somewhere in Europe, he thought. Have you heard about this? Uh, let's get to the lines and uh, let's have a look here. We've got uh, line two. Ralph. Hi, Ralph. How are you doing? Are you all right? Good, thanks. What's on your mind? I just wanted to just t- uh, talk briefly about the power sources for the island. Yeah. So I've got a list of them here. You've got geothermal, you've got hydrogen, you've got natural gas, nuclear, solar, wind, hydro, wave, and tidal. Right. All available. All right. We go back up through them now. Tidal and wave, the cost of them is a bit prohibitive, and they destroy a lot of marine life. Hydro would only give you a small amount of power. Wind... Well, wind won't give you the power. And uh, Julian and June have already given you all the fig- facts and figures on them. Julian yesterday did on the wind power. Yeah. Also, they, they'll destroy the uh, wildlife. Yeah. Then we come to uh, solar. That's still not going to give you enough power. Right? So we give natural gas. That will give you, if, if there's enough natural gas there. Nuclear will definitely give it to you. Hydrogen. Well, hydrogen will definitely give it to you as well but everyone ignores that one but the Japanese are building a a city at the base of Mount Fuji it'll be ready in 2004 and it's going to run totally on hydrogen 
and we've got plenty of water on the island, H2O, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, so we should be able to extract that. There's enough talent on the island between young people, middle-aged people, old people, put their brains together and extract it. And then we've got geothermal, which obviously they're ignoring completely. Um, why, do you, why do you think um, the government or geothermal doesn't, why do you think that never gets a, a, a good go? Not enough money in it. Wind power, a lot of money there, you know. So solar, the same thing. Hydrogen, a fair amount. Geothermal, not as much money. So they want, they're going to ignore it. And I don't know why they're going to ignore it, because they've got a white elephant over in Liverpool there, which should have been shelved years ago, because there's another 10 million going into it. Part of that 10 million could go into Bourne, um, a hole for geothermal. If it's there, then you're on a winner. If it's not there, you've only lost maybe 2 million, 2.5 million tops. Apart from pumping ten million bound down into the uh, Liverpool ferry port. Now, uh, I mean, Ralph, everything's going to be a bit of a bet for the Isle of Man. You know, we're, we're we're betting on the fact that wind turbines may bring in power. We're betting on you know putting offshore wind on as well, and uh, you know they don't blow all the time. That's fine, but when they do, they do provide electricity. So everything's go- is a bet, and it's going to cost us money. Which is the best bet for the Isle of Man? Do you think? Geothermal. Geothermal, right. by far, because it won't destroy the, the landscape or anything like that. I mean, you're talking about these wind turbines. How the heck are they going to get them in? How are they going to turn the corners? They're going to have to straighten out roads and everything to do it. And then you can't recycle them. And they've only got a lifespan of 25 years. That's it. Finish. If you get geothermal, that will stay there forever. It's been proved in different places like Southampton and places like that. But time's running out, Ralph. Time's not running out. Well, I mean, time. We've got to. They've got to. They got, the government's put a timetable. They said that we've got to have something sorted out by 2026. Yeah. So that's three years' time. So you could bore a hole in that time to find out. Easily. All they have to do is grab the horse by the reins, do it, and there you go. Okay. All right, Ralph. No, not, I appreciate not, that. Not a problem. Thanks for calling yeah. today. Good to hear from you. Uh, 22 minutes before one on Manx Radio. Ralph was talking about the Fukushima Hydrogen Energy Research Field, the world's largest hydrogen production facility using renewable energy located in uh, Fukushima in Japan. What will happen? Do you think this is something that we should look at on the Isle of Man? Again, it is. It is a bet. And if we're using public money, where is your money? Where would you put your money? Would you put it on wind power, solar power? Already there is one private so big solar wind farm proposed. That's proposed by um, uh, Belown, by the Peel Group, Mr. Whitaker's group, proposing to put uh, thousands of solar panels around uh, Belown, around Mr. Uh, Whitaker's property there. It's going for planning, I think, next month, but it uh, could be stymied if they put a solar, if they put a wind farm in the south of the Isle of Man. So there's a private company wanting to put a solar farm there to feed energy into the system. They want to put it into that 33 kilovolt uh, uh, substation in Castletown. We'll see. Tommy's on now. Hi, Tommy. Oh, oh, I am. I would tell you, I've got a bit of a special throat at the moment. I was, I was. Uh, wonder, did anybody else notice uh, on the news yesterday? Uh, I, I was uh, watching it when uh, they were, all the hierarchy of India were all self congratulating themselves and, and hugging each other. And along the bottom of the uh, the, sc- the rolling uh, uh, news at the bottom of the screen was the announcement of a, a collapsible railway bridge in India, kill, killing seventeen people, Andy. You know, I mean, how ironic is that? I mean, they don't, they don't have one of the worst railway uh, systems in the world. But, uh, wouldn't you think they'd uh, uh, fix things back down here on Earth rather than uh, worry about uh, going up to the moon? Well, they, they're very happy about the fact they've got to the moon, aren't they? Oh, well, a little bit, yeah. But, yeah, but it's not gonna, it's not going to do anything. What are they going to do? It's, it's, uh, are they going to send men up? This thing about wanting to let their land on the moon uh, all the time, Andy, is, is ridiculous. They, uh, uh, 
and nobody's going to live up, up there for the next uh, 500 years. So, so uh, uh, why should we worry about that when the, the Earth's in such a bad uh, uh, state as it is down here? Uh, good point. What's caused your sore throat, Tommy? I suffered a bit from a dandy, you know, and that little bit of tonsillitis, like, you know, and that. And uh, people uh, uh, people say, uh, you know, and I've lost my voice. They say, well, that's good, you know, and that. Uh, <laughs> good for you. Have you been to the grandstand lately? Yeah, I've been up there, Andy, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I've only got to look out my uh, kitchen window and I go downstairs and just yards across the road, Dukes Avenue. They're all in, they're all up there in the, in the campsite, Andy, you know, and that, and uh, enthusiastic as ever, you know. I, I admire them, you know. I I just hope the weather keeps uh, uh, all right for them so they can get the racing com- completed. I'd love, to, I'd love to see that. OK. All right, Tommy, thanks for being with us. Yeah, cheers, cheers, Andy. Thanks, Bob. Got a note in from G just says, India is one of the biggest contributors to global emissions, but they're putting billions into going to the moon. Uh, I was struck by that yesterday. Uh, but also the fact that, have you noticed, uh, there was great um, kerfuffle about putting rockets into space. Nobody ever seems to talk about the carbon footprint of putting rockets into space and space travel. Everybody seems to be harem scarum about everyone else's carbon footprint. I don't know, have you ever, has there ever been a carbon footprint done for NASA? Certainly, I don't think the Russians would contribute to it, but... Obviously, there is lots of uh, activity in commercial space, putting satellites into space. But um, uh, Planet of the Humans, uh, the film apparently is, by Michael Moore, this is. This is the one that uh, Ralph was talking about. Uh, Diesel's gone up 5p a litre, back to Earth we come, says Sean and John in Douglas. Diesel's gone up 5p a litre. Regarding geothermal, uh, geothermal well drilling is the only best way to go. It's non-political. It's free fuel forever. There'll be no redundancies at Pulrose Power Station. If anybody would like to form a geothermal group or meetings, uh, this uh, particular person, uh, you can email mrtp at manx.net. mrtp at manx.net if you want to form a group regarding geothermal on the island man and perhaps that's it uh, we've had many many talks about geothermal energy on man in line and possibly that's the reason that it doesn't get some traction i'm not saying it is but it may be in that there's there, there isn't millions of pounds in it wouldn't you drill the geothermal well if it works and this is the principle of you know drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling miles down into the earth's crust it's very hot down there and then you circulate water actually it's a fixed circuit of water so you're not using water all the time you have to pump prime it with water it will take water initially but uh, the thing is only about nine inches in diameter and steam comes back and you run a turbine theoretically forever because the earth isn't going to run out of heat now some people say we've got the right rock formation for it other people say we haven't got the right rock formation for it but if we do it if we did do it then it could be free for us because nobody's going to charge you for that so is this the reason that there's not a big push for it commercially in that nobody's going to make millions and millions and millions out of it? It will cost millions initially to drill and drill and drill and drill and drill and drill and drill, and, drill, and then you have to put water down it, but only a fixed amount of water. It's not unlimited water. We'll find out, and if uh, if that group gets together, then do get in touch. Ivermectin is, impro- is approved for certain uses on humans. It hasn't been approved by the FDA for use on COVID. COVID was real and dangerous, and uh, anybody who says uh, otherwise, it did cause many thousands of deaths. So stop the conspiracies, says 653. Well, everybody's got an opinion. Um, I mean, everybody, do you remember the massive problem that the Italians had at the start of the pandemic? Locked Downs and uh, masks and what have you. Uh, a BBC science programme debunked ivermectin for COVID treatment. The test subjects were not random and repeated uh, 
test took place, says Peter. Uh, thanks for getting in touch today. Uh, why is the hospital full? Is there any specific reason? Well, we've, A, we've not been told officially that the, the hospital is full, but unofficially, that's the, uh, the word out as well. The simplest uh, was to solve the problem, to get in to see, G- uh, to, to see a GP, is to have a triage service or number, says Dick. Uh, during COVID, we had a 111 service as a centralised facility that uh, managed to book a couple of hundred thousand appointments and masses of advice across the Isle of Man. As not many of us can get through to our doctors to get an emergency appointment in the morning, so isn't it time that the government stopped the bun fight and had a central number, maybe even 111 again, and if you need an emergency appointment, ring them and you'll get the next appointment near you, but not necessarily with your specific doctor. People went all over the Isle of Man for a vaccine appointment, providing people don't need to see their own GP for an emergency. Uh, plus, um, obviously, people will need to travel to A or B, or perhaps to Ramsey, or if desperate, if it proves the GP in the next surgery can see you, then go ahead. So why can't you, if it's an emergency, go anywhere within reason, provided the number of uh, that still go uh, to with a sniffle to A&E or Mandoc or the MIU in Ramsey? This would stop the worried uh, ringing up their doctors each week when they fancy a chat or a tablet. They could have got at the chemist. Outside of that, you can still see your doctor, but not necessarily the same day. But it might just ease pressure on the surgeries, says uh, Dick. Again, the situation with getting a, a, a GP appointment. Is it something particularly uh, that you've had a problem with? The last type of arson-related fires were back in the 1990s when local terror groups thought it would be a good idea to set fire to new-built houses. Thank you, Fran. Yes, the uh, the prophet of doom, 762. Excellent points, says Ian Maids, uh, regarding the fires by Julian. It appears that if you don't agree with the climate change lobby they and dare to offer an opposite view, you're castigated no matter what the evidence is that you produce. Well, everybody's opinion is welcome on Man in Line. I mean, the, the job of Man in Line is not necessarily to come to the conclusion, but it is to have the debate, is to find out what people think. Our job is quite simple. We share an assortment of views and opinions, and we understand what other people think and why they think it. Coming to a specific conclusion, well, you can do that yourself, but what you will hear on Man in Line is an assortment of views and opinions. That way, You know what the other person is thinking. You may not agree with it, but you hear what they are thinking. It's not something you always get on social media. For your new bathroom, head to Paysetter, Harris Terrace, Douglas or Spring Valley. In Paysetter's fully fitted showroom, you'll find the latest bathroom products and designs from new contemporary styles to traditional Victorian tiles, wall and ceiling panels, accessories and much more. With many ranges exclusive to Paysetter's plus professional design advice from the experts, visit Paysetter, Harris Terrace, Douglas. Douglas or Spring Valley. You can get the best of everything where the price is twice as nice. Spectral windows. If your house needs a new look and your windows let in rain, keep those cold breezes out and make it look like you again. Spectrum windows, spectrum windows. Quality through and through. Great work, guarantee to you. Mike has got the Conister feeling. Because despite his busy life, getting the finance to sort some home improvements was quicker and easier than he ever dreamt with Conister Bank. You got me feeling good, got me feeling good, got me feeling good, good, got me feeling good, good, yeah! Ooh, and not even Conister can help improve his singing. Apply online today at conisterbank.co.in and you'll get the Conister feeling too.
All loans are subject to status. Terms and conditions apply. Early settlement fees apply. Jump aboard the time train and take a trip back to the 1960s on Carnaby Street every Saturday morning at half past eight with Isle of Man Railways. It's full of 60s hits and memories. On board the time train, Gladys the tea lady. All right, boys. Harry the driver. Hello, crispy old mate. Roger the fireman. All aboard Isle of Man Railways time train. Oh, and Raffles the dog. <laughs> and of course you and me. You can win tickets for two for one of the Isle of Man Railways fantastic dining car experiences. Carnaby Street, half past eight. On Manx Radio, on AM, FM, online, on smart speakers and all over the world at manxradio.com. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Thanks to Mike. Good afternoon. Thanks for dropping by. It's nine minutes for one and it's a beautiful day on the Isle of Man today, of course, as MGP practice uh, at the moment and also possibly this evening as well if the weather holds out. Certainly came in last night, didn't it? Apart from the north of the Isle of Man, which was glorious. <laughs> it was raining bilio on the mountain and glorious in the north of the Isle of Man. And you know what they say about the sunshine. Uh, the new chief constable, says Textor 490, coming from across, must have seen and dealt with some horrendous things. To come to this relatively crimeless island, you can only hope that the chief constable will keep it that way. The chief constable must have zero tolerance to keep us all safe. I left working all over Greater Manchester 30 years ago. It was like a war zone in some areas. And when you see the news of what goes on, now it's scary. Uh, so we can't afford to let uh, um, people terrorise uh, other people. We can't let uh, criminals terrorise. North- well, I can guarantee you one thing. Having chatted to remember the chief constable was on earlier on this year, virtually uh, a little bit after he'd started, uh, he, <laughs> he understands absolutely what the situation is on the Isle of Man. And they know uh, full well where the criminals are they know all about the drugs and they know where they come from across it's just a matter of catching people isn't it it's just a matter of being there what i can tell you is chief constables aren't going to be on man in line before christmas uh, he's going to be on i think it's the week before christmas this year so he'll be able to give us a full view of what 2023 has meant and what the strategy is regarding this uh, so that russ foster the chief constable of isle of bank and Stabler, is going to be on uh, before Christmas this year on uh, Man in Line. Talking of uh, being on before Christmas, next week, a week tomorrow, Kerry Sharp is on. Kerry is the Isle of Man children's champion. And we'll also have Laurie Hooper, uh, DHSC min- uh, uh, minister. Uh, that's really because uh, Kerry is uh, the children's champion. Her main job as children's champion is to be a voice for children who are in care for young carers and children with complex needs. So we're going to be talking about, well, children on the Isle of Man, particularly children who are in care, disadvantaged children, if you like, and where where we stand for the future. And Laurie Hooper will be on there. We'll talk about adoption and fostering and what's going to happen on the Isle of Man. And if you've got an opinion on any of those and you want to get in touch, you can call on the day or in the meantime, you can leave a message on the answer phone on 682631 or email maninline at manxradio.com. So that's the MLC Kerry Sharp, the Isle of Man Children's Champion. And Laurie Hooper, Minister for the DHSC, talking about uh, children. And remember, they are the future. They will pay the taxes in the future. They'll look after people in the future. So how is the Isle of Man looking after children who are in care for young carers and children with complex needs? That's a week uh, t- uh, tomorrow. Actually, just looking even further forward, a fortnight tomorrow, Friday the 8th, we're talking about tourism on the Isle of Man. And Tim Crookall, the political member uh, Department for Enterprise uh, in Tourism, and Deborah Heather, who's the new chief exec of Visit Isle of Man. So that's a fortnight tomorrow, tourism on the Isle of Man. And again, if you've got any thoughts on that, then do get in touch. Uh, just regarding the theory test, the driving theory test, and the time it takes now to get a test, um, Ryan dropped a note in and just said many have had to reset their theory test to re- and renew their provisional ones. Uh, many people are struggling to find a driving instructor, many waiting over one and two years to find one. We found that out when Man in Line's been to the schools. And how much it costs? £40 an hour during the week and possibly £50 
pounds an hour for a driving lesson at weekends. I personally, said Ryan, think the government should consider extending the validation of the theory test and provisional license. The theory test validation should be extended from two to three years and the provisional should be validated for two years. This would slightly help learners and prevent them from having to reset their theory test and renew their provisional due to the shortage of driving instructors. Uh, do the listeners to Man in Line agree with this? Well, I wonder what your thoughts are. I called Peel Doctors today and they told me there were no appointments available, says H. September rota hasn't been agreed, so no September slots could be booked. Over. I did get a telephone appointment in the middle of September. Three weeks, is it really acceptable? It does seem ridiculously bad if we want to grow the population. Seems we can't cope with what we already have. Is it that bad in Peel? That's it for Man in Line today. Thanks to Howie on the phones. It's going to be back tomorrow at high noon with another open line. W-I-N-T